2023 has been a great year if you are opposed to the idea of ESG business investing. Companies leaned hard into the ESG parts but totally forgot the business part where you make a valuable product and the investing portion where the money is like supposed to grow. This year proved that the acronym should come second to basic business practices like serving your customer. You are stronger than ESG scores. Across the board, we're seeing companies losing money chasing after these silly scores, and one of the hardest hit is the Disney company, and as you can probably tell from the thumbnail, I am absolutely heartbroken. People like me make videos about entertainment and pop culture, and we often wonder aloud why companies engage in performative diversity, this naked pandering to a specific social progressive ideology. Often in the comments, you'll see the reply, they do it because of the ESG. Let's look into that, and I'll tell you the good news, that shadowy investing firms don't control the culture as much as you might think, and I'll tell you personal steps you can take in all of this with your life. Personal step number one, you gotta hit that like button. Mm, that's it, we got him, we got him. Let's get the nuts and bolts out of the way first. What the heck is ESG investing and what does it have to do with stuff like Bud Light letting Dylan Mulvaney be a spokesman for them? Big mistake, big, huge. ESG investing is the solidification of general ideas about conscious capitalism that have been floating around for about as long as the word capitalism. It was formally introduced in a UN paper in 2004 and it stands for environmental, social, and governance. It's also sometimes called sustainable investing because its proponents say it's the best way to maintain a sustainable balance between profit and positive impact on the world. On the surface, this sounds great. You got a more transparent company, they treat their workers well, they do great things for the community. Theoretically, they should do better, but it doesn't seem to be working that way, and this experiment is being carried out with other people's money. The environmental portion, pretty self-explanatory. How is the company making a positive impact on the environment? The social bit is more murky, but generally relates to how the company is supporting its community and its workers, and how it's promoting things like diversity, equity, and inclusion. Those are your favorite three letters. Governance is about company transparency with its methods, accounting to its investors. It also includes diversity, equity, and inclusion in company leadership. Big issues with this method are that there is no single body that determines these scores. Multiple asset firms have their own way of accounting, and these methods are private. The other issue is that saying we're doing positive things doesn't always mean positive things are happening. In the area of environmental, for example, most sources you find will tell you the climate is changing, we gotta do something! But there isn't a provable path forward to fixing this problem, assuming that it actually is a problem and that we can fix it without consequence. <sighs> you know, I don't know why I'm being so contrary about that. I really should just trust the experts. I mean, in America, ever since 1913, the banking system and economy have been smooth as butter, as predicted. So long as your intentions are good, nothing bad can ever happen. On the social side, many opponents of DEI initiatives, like myself, argue that it places too much focus on superficial, immutable qualities like skin color and gender. I contend that DEI stuff is dehumanizing and it's worse for gender and race relations. But we don't get to debate any of this and none of the uncertainties are stopping our enormous financial institutions from spending our money in our best interest because we peasants just don't know any better. When you look for info about ESG stuff, its defenders will remind you that financial decisions have been based on conscious consumerism for decades. There are always boycotts or calls for support for one company or another. In a certain sense, you participate in the spirit of ESG when you, say, refuse to shop at Target because they were marketing LGBTQ apparel for children, or you refuse to buy Chick-fil-A because the company leadership is publicly against same-sex marriage. You're saying that you won't patronize the company because, in these examples, they aren't adhering to your social values. All of us do this every day, and it's a fine idea, though personally I try to keep the social stuff as a secondary or tertiary factor in my purchases. Primarily, I want a quality product for a good value, and if all things are equal, I might use the company's stated values to make a decision. Product is first, though. Lord forgive me. Canes is better than Chick-fil-A. I said what I said. The difference between you making these decisions and your financial firm using your 401k money to further ESG goals is that your agency is removed and you, the customer, are not being prioritized. Vanguard handles my retirement because my company says so. I don't really have a say. The only thing I want from Vanguard is for my retirement account to be as big as possible. That's their job. That's what they're being paid for. I'll improve the world on my own in the way that I see fit. 
And I feel like it's a betrayal that my money is being invested in what someone else considers to be a socially conscious way. What in the devil's name is this? Portobello mushrooms. Where's the steak? Oh, there's no steak. That's a healthier option. It's organically grown. But this year, we finally saw that you can only prop up a bad business for so long. For years, people have been chanting, get woke, go broke. And 2023 looks to be the year that the latter part is finally happening. In May, Bud Light self-immolated when they sent Dylan Mulvaney a press kit to make some reels. Six months later, Bud Light sales are still down 30% year over year. Shares of parent company InBev have been down about 15 to 20% ever since. That's a market cap loss of 20 to 30 billion dollars. Target faffed about with kids and found out, introducing an LGBT kids line two weeks before Pride Month. The ensuing firestorm saw their stock dropping immediately, second quarter sales dropping by 5%. The stock price continues to take a beating, now being down 35% from May. That's a market cap loss of $25 billion. Target hasn't traded at these levels since the fall of 2019. They can claim they pulled Pride merch because of harassment, but cynical me says that's a cover and the sales data is the real reason. Of course, the most famous loser in all of this has been Disney, whose stock is currently trading at levels not seen since 2014. This year alone, it's been estimated that they have lost a billion dollars at the box office with flop after flop, churning out terrible products that put virtue signaling first and story like ninth. It's not just the theaters. Since the start of the year, their streaming service, Disney Plus, has lost 18 million customers, currently at 146 million after peaking last year at 164. Since the service was introduced in 2019, it has lost the company over $11 billion. And the bad news doesn't stop there. Reports have been coming in all summer long about the empty parks. Here is a shot of the average wait times across the park on July 4th. Fully half what it was in 2017 and 18. Just a couple of weeks ago, the Galactic Starship Cruiser, a billion dollar investment, took its final voyage. Now, I want to make a point about Disney especially. People, by and large, aren't avoiding their movies and parks and their subscription service because of the company's social politics, in my opinion. They're avoiding Disney products because they just aren't high quality. And they're not high quality because that's not the priority anymore. Social politics is the priority. I firmly believe that their current market problem is not because customers are fed up with these specific politics. It's because politics came before customer and quality. For many years now, Disney has been extremely vocal about the company's official stance on social policy and culture. And the more they focused on squeezing in nods to their fellow progressives, the more the quality slipped. And even Disney diehards, even social progressives, aren't going to continue to pay Disney's insane prices for poor quality. Oh, they'll tweet about it. They'll publicly praise Disney, but they sure as hell didn't buy tickets for Little Mermaid or Indiana Jones or Elemental or Disney Plus or Haunted Mansion or Ant-Man Quantumania. They keep doing these things though, and it's partly to raise that ESG score, which brings us back to the question, why is that score so important? There are two big reasons, and as we're going to see, only one of them seems to be valid. Publicly held companies need a steady flow of investment dollars for many reasons, and three of the world's biggest asset managers, BlackRock, Vanguard and State Street Capital have leaned into ESG investing and they collectively control over 20 trillion dollars. <laughs> Companies need big institutions like these to buy up and hold large chunks of their stock to keep the price high. Not only does it inspire other smaller investors, a high stock price can be necessary for day-to-day -day operations for a large company. Often they'll take out debt against it as collateral or sell some to raise cash. They also use stock options as incentive to attract supposedly savvy management. By playing the ESG game, these companies believe they will attract institutional buyers who are generally more stable than than retail investors like me. Guys, you got to get in the retail trading game, especially penny stocks and crypto. You can make five, six, seven, eight hundred percent returns. What can you lose? You can only lose 100%. <laughs> the math speaks for itself. Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. <sighs> don't cry. The other reason they play the game is because they have obligations to the shareholders, and the shareholders are mostly institutions. Disney, for example, two-thirds of this company is held by institutions, and they have voting power. So if the institutions say jump, Iger kind of has to. 
Those three big firms I mentioned a minute ago collectively hold over 300 million shares, or roughly 17% of the company. And since they're the biggest players, they tend to sway votes as smaller firms follow their lead. Honestly, it feels a bit like a protection racket, right? Like Disney has to keep their ESG score high or else the big boys will withdraw their support and money. Any one of those three could signal low confidence in the stock and it would crater. But we are seeing a big win for consumers because they have collectively shown that all the investment in the world doesn't outweigh a bad product. As much as Disney needs the favor of institutional investors, it also needs the favor of customers. And they seem to have forgotten that bit. We are seeing a consumer revolution right now, with the majority of customers turning away from performative diversity products, even those that agree with the diversity. Each year, more of the LGBT community gets louder in their criticism of corporate activism during Pride Month. More of them and their allies are waking up to the reality that none of this is genuine. It's just a marketing gimmick. The Pride products especially are ugly as hell. They just slap a rainbow on something and say, Money, please. So that brings us to you, dear viewer. What does all of this mean for you? First, it should give you confidence and remind you that your buying power is stronger than any other power in the economic game. If a company is making a bad product, simply stop buying. You aren't required to explain yourself or post about it. Just keep your money. Something that bothers me is the general attitude that capitalism only works one way. I hear people complain about companies exploiting people like they're coming into your home and forcibly taking your money. This is not the case, especially with something like Disney, which only sells luxuries. You always have the ability to say no, and you should be saying it more often. Capitalism works both ways, and you should be requiring these companies to earn your business. You also should recognize that most of these social issues are constructed to either get your vote, or your money, or both. Disney doing a remake with a black aerial that was just a ploy to get free headlines and stir up customers to buy tickets to stick it to those damn conservatives. On the other hand, you've got companies like Ultra Right Beer using the Bud Light thing to sell a beer that hadn't even been made yet, preying on reactionary customers who wanted to own the libs. If you believe that your purchase of something is owning somebody somewhere, you have been duped. You gotta act like a capitalist, not a culture warrior. Use, grow, and protect your assets. And that's not just money, by the way. That includes things like your time, your relationships, and your health. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time.